I want to give a summary of how you would terminate a, uh, the signal or the response of a G protein coupled receptor and a G protein based on if you're over firing and you want to desensitize this G protein to some sort of uh, extracellular ligand out here that keeps on binding and is overstimulating the G protein coupled receptor and thus the internal signal and signaling cascade that's going on inside the cell. So this is a video on the termination of, uh, of the response, I guess, of the response. So we have seen that ligand binding results in receptor activation and the activated receptors will turn on some sort of G protein right here and the G proteins turn on some sort of effector. So to prevent this overstimulation, receptors need to be blocked from continuing to activate these G proteins. The effector must be returned to their inactive state, in other words. So desensitization is the process that that blocks the active receptors from turning on additional G proteins. And it takes place in two different steps. So in the first step, the cytoplasmic domain, so this is the cytoplasmic domain, of the activated GPCR is phosphorylated by a specific type of kinase called a G protein um, uh, coupled receptor kinase. So I'm just gonna write that as GRK will phosphorylate this G protein coupled receptors. Uh, GRKs uh, are just kind of a small family of serine threonine proteins, um, and they specifically recognize GPCRs. So this will set the stage for the second step, which is the binding of proteins that are called arrestin. So think of arrestin as it is arresting the cell response. So arrestins just form a small family of proteins that can bind to GPCRs, and they complete binding for um, heterotrimeric G proteins, uh, where they compete for the binding. So instead of a, a G protein that may be right here that wants to bind, this arrestin will be bound already, so this one cannot be activated, and this cannot activate some sort of effector molecule down the line. So desensitization is one of the mechanisms that allow a cell to respond to a change in its environment. Rather than continue to fire endlessly all of these, all of these signals coming into the cell continuously, uh, in the presence of some sort of unchanging environment, you don't want that to happen. The cells do not want to waste energy, so they need to have a way to turn off signaling like this. So while they are bound to these phosphorylated GPCRs, arrestin molecules are also capable of binding to AP2. So AP2 is right here, which are situated in the clathrin-coated pits. So the interaction between these arrestin and clathrin-coated pits promotes the uptake of phosphorylated GPCRs into the cell by endocytosis. So this is endocytosis, so it is engulfing this GPCR inside the cell, so it would be floating around like this. This is called an endosome right here. So in some cases, the receptors travel along the endocytic pathway into endosomes, where the associated arrestin molecules serve as a scaffold for the assembly of various cytoplasmic signaling complexes. So the MAPK pathway would be an example of this. Um, in other cases, in a second outcome, the internalized receptors may traffic endosomes to lysosomes, right over here, where they are degraded. So if the receptors are degraded, the cells lose, um, or at least temporarily lose, the sensitivity for whatever ligand is in question that is binding to this specific G protein coupled receptor. And then according to the third scheme, the arrestin bound GPCRs might be dephosphorylated, so no more phosphates on this and they'll be returned to the plasma membrane. If the receptors are returned to the cell surface, they remain sensitive to whatever ligand they were sensitive to in the beginning, and they are called uh, resensitized. So you can desensitize them and then resensitize them once again. Um, in the last video, I talked about how G proteins may be turned off based on just the uh, hydrolyzation of the GTP molecule. So a GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP. So the strength and duration of any signal are determined in part by the rate of GTP hydrolysis of the alpha subunit. So if we had our little alpha, if this is a lipid bilayer here, and we have our alpha molecule that's bound to some sort of effector molecule, the strength of the signaling is based on how quickly 
this can be hydrolyzed to GT, GDP plus some phosphate group. So uh, alpha G subunits that possess a weak GTBase activity uh, allows them to slowly hydrolyze the bound GTP and inactivate themselves. Termination of the response is accelerated by regulators, as there always are regulators in any type of signaling pathway, and these ones are called regular, uh, regulators of G protein signaling, or just, I'll write this in a different color, RGS. So RGS would regulate the speed of this hydrolysis, and the interaction of the RGS protein increases the rate of the hydrolysis of the beta subunit. Um, so once the GTP is hydrolyzed, the G alpha GDP reassociates with the beta and gamma. As I've shown in the previous video, it will come and reassociate with your beta and your gamma. So this is your alpha, and it will be in its inactive state. Um, something that's interesting is a bacterial toxin and how G protein coupled receptors, since like I said, are super, super important for all types of cell signaling in the body they can be a target for the um, uh, bacterial pathogens. So an example of this would be the cholera toxin. So you've probably heard of cholera. Now I'll write it right here, cholera. And cholera is often associated with extreme diarrhea and dehydration. So what it actually does is it exerts its effect by modifying the G alpha subunits and then inhibiting their GTBase activity of the intestinal epithelium. So the intestinal epithelium is just the, the outer layer of the intestine. And then as a result, adenyl cyclase molecules, which are an effector molecule, they will remain in an activated mode. So they will, they will churn large, large volumes of cyclic AMP. So if you have some sort of adenyl cyclase right here, that's activating a ton of cyclic AMP. Uh, this will cause the epithelial cells to secrete large volumes of, of fluid into the intestinal lumen. And then this loss of water is associated with the inappropriate response that often leads to death due to dehydration. So that is the termination of a response that seems pretty complicated, but it is, it is very simple if you just look at this diagram and watch the video you should be able to understand that it is just a simply a molecule binding that and then it uh, will uh, be uh, turned into an endosome and then it can have uh, three different outcomes so it could go it could go right here you could activate some other pathways the ERK pathway map k could go here to be a lysosome to be degraded or it could come up here to be recycled and resensitized to bind to ligands once again